Spoiler alert, this review of this Star Wars prequel is gonna be a lot less negative than the previous two. I would be lying if I said I disliked it or hated it, it too. Hell, sometimes I sometimes want to include this in my Star Wars marathon. This, the same cannot ever be said for the Phantom Menace nor Attack of the Clones though. Let's get to the review. Heroes on both sides. What? What the fuck does that even mean? The opening starts off with an intense space battle above Coruscant, the capital of the Republic. There's CGI in this, but, at, but hey, at least it's forgivable and actually looks cool this time around. This is the kind of intro of the first two prequels should have had. That's not to say it should be a copy and paste of this, but at least make it dramatic and show the evil and good. Like how the original trilogy does, did it, and the sequel the trilogy did it, even though it's not completed yet. But nonetheless, this scene and sequence is great. The Force theme is ramped up right after Obi-Wan and Anakin are flown into the picture. Almost everything about the scene is great. One thing that bugs me though, despite Anakin being shown piloting, we never really do see him do anything intense. You know, like the kind of pilot, you know, like the kind of pilot Wedge and Tilly's Hansel and of course Poe Dameron were. We wanted to see his best piloting skills, other than just spinning and just spinning. Sorry. But spinning is not being the best pilot in the galaxy. Despite being the best prequel, we still didn't get what we're told about Anakin in the original trilogy. He wasn't shown the best pilot in the galaxy. He wasn't shown as a noble and cunning warrior and great friend to Obi-Wan Kenobi. But this film at least is forgivable in certain ways. The Clone Wars series portrayed Anakin's character far better than what the prequel films did. Both the 2D and 3D series, for that matter. Obi-Wan and Anakin vs. Count Dooku felt grounded, even though Count Dooku never really created tension throughout the prequels. Only reason we think he's a bad guy because he has a red lightsaber, for that matter. We never really see him being evil towards the characters we're in, we are meant to invest in. Only reason he was useful and good in the prequel trilogy is to sh is that Anakin killing him is what Anakin is is to show what Anakin is becoming. When Palpatine k tells him to kill Dooku, you can feel the evil in him. Palpatine knew he was becoming more powerful in his eyes. He knew what he was becoming. He know he knew he had potential to be his new apprentice. That's why you can feel. Get the feel of the Emperor in this scene. Aside from Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan in this uh, film, Ian McDermott is the best thing about this movie. <laughs> the Emperor and Obi-Wan Kenobi were the best fucking characters in this film. This also was the movie everyone was looking forward to because we all knew Anakin was going to become Darth Vader. We were going to see how the Jedi were nearly extinct and fallen. We were going to see the origins of the Galactic Empire, the birth of Luke and Leia. Obi-Wan Kenobi said that he's not brave enough for politics. Well, Obi-Wan, I'm brave enough to get a brain tuber from the monotonous, useless politics in the prequels that no one cares to watch or invest in in Star Wars movies or that no one thinks of when they think of Star Wars. Of course, right after an awesome sequence in this film, we're back to this kind of shit. Oh. oh, great. This bullshit again. Yoda being a video game. The future, Anakin. The fear of loss is a path to the dark side. No, Yoda, as Hello Greedo said, Fear of loss is natural within the humans. Around you who transform into the Force, mourn them do not, miss them do not. Don't miss or mourn or get upset over the deaths of loved ones? 
Wow, that sums up almost every fucking character with a personality of a paper bag in this film. Because that is robotic as fuck. Are we supposed to have a Kristen Stewart reaction when people we love die or something? What are you? My ex-best friends who tell me how to feel and what not to feel? Human emotions are natural. My career school teachers has better advice than this cheap video game Yoda. That's not the Yoda I remember. That's not the Yoda I'm looking for. But enough about the Obi-Wan impression. Let's move on with the review. Luke feared a loss for his friends during the Battle of Endor because he was human. When he had human emotions, it didn't mean it was robotically turning to the dark side. There was nothing special. There's absolutely nothing special about CGI characters when almost every fucking character in almost every fucking setting especially the sequence on Mustafar is a special effect but enough about this video game cuss scene and enough about this negative about Revenge of the Sith but anyways there's nothing special about special effects when the entire prequel trilogy is a special effect. One thing I hate more than anything else in the prequels is how poorly mishandled Anakin was. I could have easily let slide all other numerous problems these movies had if Anakin, the main point that these movies were even made, was interesting and compelling. He wasn't. If, in fact, Anakin might actually be the least interesting character in the entire prequels, and these movies were supposed to be all about him. He had no personality aside of being a whiny asshole, nor really do we learn about him as a person or other than why he's angry. You know why would I wanted to see what Obi-Wan Kenobi described him in A New Hope. He was, the... he was the best star pilot in the galaxy and a cunning warrior. And he was a good friend. That, what Obi-Wan said, that's the Anakin Skywalker I wanted to see. I wanted to see how a noble man is lured into serving evil. Instead, what we got was a whiny, insure angry, bland, two-dimensional, psychopathic asshole who was basically tricked into becoming evil. I also hate how, for no reason, Lucas made Anakin so overblown and important to the entire course of the saga by making him space Jesus. The idea that Anakin was some destined Jedi Messiah was created solely from out from the prequels. The original trilogy never mentioned nor even hinted at the idea that Vader was supposed to be some sort of chosen one. From information gathered about him in the original trilogy, it's clear he was meant to be nothing more than a simple Jedi Knight seduced by power. Anyways, back to the movie. I like to tell Palpatine tells the story of Darth Plagueis. A story of how an ancient Sith had the power to stop people from dying. Palpatine assumably sensed Anakin's fear of losing Padme, so he tries to manipulate Anakin to the dark side for more power since he knew Anakin would be his most powerful apprentice. I also love the Wookiee army against the droid army, something I always wished my favorite Star Wars movie, that being Return of the Jedi by the way, did instead of Ewoks, but sorry to say, Revenge of the Sith, that doesn't make Revenge of the Sith as a film 100% better than Return of the Jedi. Sure, there was a lot of CGI characters into this, but it was still cool, cool as fuck in some places. Now let's jump to the Utapau sequence. It's a wick cool setting in the Star Wars universe, minus the absolutely horseshit video look Gave video game looking characters, but Obi-Wan's role in the sequence? Pointless, boring, 
unnecessary rubbish filler. General Grievous is a shit and bland character. The duel against Grievous is was what ruined lightsabers. Oh my fucking god. Remember the candy, cookies, and cake analogy I did in Attack of the Clones? Well, this is like getting type 2 diabetes from that stuff. This, that's like a massive amount of cake and candy eaten. Seriously, why send Obi-Wan Kenobi alone? General Grievous could have sliced through Obi-Wan like butter, like he supposedly did to all the other Jedi he encountered. You could have sent like 10 Jedi to take on this supposedly dangerous character with four damn arms. Oh, this shit! I can't take Dooku alone! Wait, Obi-Wan, how is it that you can't, that you say you can't take Dooku alone on Geonosis, but you can take General Grievous, aka a video game character with four fucking arms and four fucking lightsabers that could slice through you like butter alone, no problem on that Utapau? Obi-Wan didn't even f react nor flinch at Grievous. This is what happens when you turn Star Wars into a video game. When everyone is surrounded by a blue screen or a green screen, a su it sucks out all the human emotions. That's why one of the several reasons the original tri trilogy, The Force Awakens, and Rogue One are far, far better than the prequels. Yes, including... Revenge of the Sith, even though I don't dislike it, I surely dislike 1 and 2 a lot, but not this film. What is up with the standards? Don't get me wrong, I think this film is decent to say the least. But Obi-Wan's role here was pointless and dull and filler. Ewan McGregor is a great actor, and Obi-Wan... Kenobi is a great character, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't given much throughout the year entire trilogy. General Grievous in the 2D and maybe even the 3D Clone Wars, even though I haven't seen too much of the 3D series, is better than this video game POS. At least he shows how he got the cough in the 2D series. I don't know I don't know why that's not considered canon by the way. It shows how Anakin became a Jedi Knight and the backstory to Palpatine's fake kidnap. Well, it's canon in my Star Wars lore. I'm sorry, that was a tangent. Chance. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Palpatine looking at the Death Star plans and acting like, oh shit, Anakin's coming when he turns it off. <laughs> now let's talk about the duel against Palpatine. That's actually pretty cool too, minus the flips from Palpatine and Flippy Doos. When Palpatine supposedly pins himself down by the window, that's him ramping up a manipulation towards Anakin. I like the idea of Anakin feeling regretful helping Palpatine kill Mace Windu so Anakin can keep his trust in someone who supposedly has the power to save loved ones from dying. I love Palpatine's manipulation in the film. I absolutely love the idea of Anakin turning to the dark side to try to save his loved one. But however, in the original trilogy, that's not what's told. What was told is that Darth Vader was subdued by the dark side of the Force, meaning he was becoming so powerful, he was greedy for more Force power, he decides the dark side will give him Force powers to the limit. But nope, it's apparently dysfunctional vision about a death of a loved one that turned him to the dark side. His his journey to the dark side is was just heavily rushed. How does one romance fail ruin the entire galaxy? This is also why the whole Kylo Ren turning evil because of power is stupid is a highly invalid argument. Use that same dumbass logic as the pre-2002 Star Wars fan could have had about Darth Vader if that's what your dumbassery is. That's one reason I dislike the prequel trilogy and like the sequel trilogy. The sequel trilogy doesn't contradict anything in the original trilogy, or ruin anything in the orig original trilogy. But we will still talk about that some other time. 
The idea of Order 66 is great too. I however, however wish they told us enough about these characters in the previous two films while those two were taking place in the Clone Wars rather than the than a prologue story that makes no fucking logic at all. I wish most of these characters that died in Order 66 were explored enough in the prequel trilogy so the emotional weight would have been a lot bigger. But at least there's a Clone Wars series in the video game series which I which is why I had an emotional weight to this when I saw this in theaters much more than I should have. I I wasn't feeling sad because I watched Attack of the Clones or The Phantom Menace. I felt sad watching this scene because of all the video games I played and the emotional connections I had to those. The idea of Order 66 that programs clone troopers to kill all of the Jedi is a great idea. Is it gun punching? I'd say yes. The music is what makes it extra gut punching too. Revenge of the Sith is arguably arguably has the best pre soundtrack. Sorry, I tripped over my words there for a bit. Of the prequels too. Battle of the Heroes is my favorite track in the entire prequel trilogy. If you don't count Duel of the Fates though, from the Phantom Menace. Anakin killing kids. Eh, that's wicked over the top. We didn't really need it to go that dark. Is it me, or did I always think that the planet below Mustafar looks like Jupiter? Seriously, it looks like a gas planet. I don't know about you guys, but the brutal murdering from Anakin never really bothered me. But after watching Rogue One, that completely changed how I watched this scene. <laughs> Only problem is that that scene keep getting cut to political crap, but at least it's about the Republic being reorganized into the Galactic Empire. I also love the look on Anakin's face with the tear mark. It shows that despite his motivation to turn to the dark side to save his loved one, he still feels unsure and regretful for what he has done. The music sums it up too. He's confused whether or not what he did was right or wrong. The convo between Obi-Wan and Anakin on Mustafar, I will definitely say, contain a lot of quotes to say when talking to someone that betrayed you in real life, in a way. Minus the don't make me kill you part, I guess, though. <laughs> Why did I even say it? I guess. I'm talking to myself too much. <laughs> that combo actually kind of sort of <clears throat> feels realistic for... <coughs> 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 That conversation actually feels realistic for once. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Before we get to the final lightsaber fight, let's talk about the duel between Yoda and Palpatine. Well, the first one was just... Eh. But I have nothing to say, but I like how in the sequence they were using their force abilities against each other. Now, let's talk about the final lightsaber duel. Is it the best duel in the prequels? Well, yeah, with with uh, the duel from uh, the Phantom Menace coming in in second place. This lightsaber duel has actually has motivation. Well, not really mo entirely motivation, but emotional weight to it for once. While yes, the over-the-top flashy visuals are incredibly nauseating, unnecessarily and ridiculous as fuck when it focuses on the flashy visuals and explosions rather than the characters in the second act of the fight. The dialogue in the last act of the long ass fight is dumb as fuck. Anakin landing on a droid's head is co comically stupid and ridiculously fuck as too and a bit invincible as well. But at least it's forgivable in a way. It has emotional weight because but that's because we knew their future. The, if the first two prequels had the friendship between Obi-Wan and Anakin like the Clone Wars had and like the video games had, and like what Han Solo and Luke Skywalker had, and like what Finn and Poe had in The Force Awakens, the emotional weight to this would have been a lot bigger and better. I would much rather skip the first two prequels and watch either the the two Clone Wars series, whether 2D or 3D, than the first two disgraces to Star Wars. Obi-Wan yelling at 
Anakin, his disappointment and sadness is awesome and gut-punching too. You can absolutely feel and emotionally connect with Obi-Wan in this sequence. I still 12 years later don't get how having the high ground means you win the fight, but to be fair, I bet he was thinking back to the duel against Darth Maul, so he, for 13 years, was rethinking the fight over and over and thought of how Darth Maul could have won the fight, so Obi-Wan gets the high ground and then says, don't try it. That's an indication that he's going to do what Darth Maul failed to do, chop off limbs. George, you sure you'd like to kid you would like kids to watch this? I can't help but to get chills at the Darth Vader transformation scene. That was great too. The Imperial Fleet, the Blockade Runner, the ending where Owen and Baru hold baby Luke and look at the twin sons was awesome too. I really do not want to act like I'm going on a nostalgia trip, but it reminded us when Star Wars was good. The good side of Star Wars, the connection and bridge between the prequels and the originals. But unfortunately, a lot of shit in the prequels, including this film, doesn't feel right. A lot of contradictions that ruin the original trilogy and still make me feel uncomfortable to think the prequels exist. I still, to this day, remain uncounted. They exist in the same universe as the original trilogy. Every fan knew they were going to see the origins of Darth Vader, the Galactic Empire, the fall of the Jedi, and the birth of Luke and Leia. The sweet sequence with Leia on Alderaan was great too. we never seen the surface of Alderaan before. It looks super beautiful. As, as for Padme's funeral, sorry, but I, don't, I didn't really care much about her character anyway. I want to feel sad, and I know I should feel sad, but a lot of characters, including Padme, fail to connect with me. Every character was the same vanilla personality and dead inside character, including her, unfortunately. In the original trilogy, Leia was un emotionally relatable. In The Force Awakens, Rey was emotionally relatable and likable. Padme? Nope. Now let's talk about her death. Leia in Return of the Jedi said he... She, my bad. <laughs> Forget that I said he. Leia in Return of the Jedi said she remembers images of her mother. She, was she in Return of the Jedi just talking about the 30 second screen time before Padme just died? Beautiful and kind and sad is what she said in Return of the Jedi. How could she know if she only saw three second, 30 seconds of her, or only a few minutes of her? Maybe Leia has force powers where you can have memories from birth, or maybe Lucas just dicked up and contradicted the fucking hell out of the original trilogy. Talk about force cop-out. What a s- what a way to stupidly cover up a mistake in the pre prequel trilogy. C-3PO doesn't remember anything from the prequel trilogy all because of a plot hole to fill in. What was the fucking purpose of wiping C-3PO's mind? The only reason that was thrown in there was to cover up a fuck up in the prequel trilogy. Captain Antilles. Yes, your Highness. I'm placing these droids in your care. Treat them well, clean them up. Have the protocol droids mind wiped. What? <laughs> oh no. That was easy. Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Bail Organa discussing where to take care of Leia and Luke was great too. That's nonsense about Yoda teaching Obi-Wan to talk to ghosts. 
Luke didn't need teaching in the original trilogy to talk to fucking ghosts. But how are god damn I get chill just I just get chills at the construction of the Death Star and the Imperial Fleet. And Obi-Wan going into hiding as soon as he hands the baby Luke to Uncle Owen in Amperu was great. Now, what do I think of this movie as a whole? It's uh, rather in the gray area. It's decent. I would give it like a 7 out of 10 or a 6.99 out of 10. I still kind of liked it. I, f I feel like this movie had potential to not fuck up. But unfortunately, a lot of stuff ruins the gr great a lot in this film. But however, I still would like to include it in my Star Wars marathon in lore if I were going to do do a marathon of my own one day. The first two prequels on the other hand, no. Too disgraceful to be called Star Wars. But Revenge of the Sith, not as much. But before I go, let's talk about the similarities between Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi, since a lot of the Force Awakens haters tend to ride the prequels to dick, including Revenge of the Sith, which they are, which they blindly defend too. And by the way, similarities is not a reason I like or dislike a film, so don't whine if I point out similarities. Luke and Anakin both dressed in black. Protagonists on a rescue mission. Revenge of the Sith to rescue Palpatine and Return of the Jedi to rescue Han Solo. A bridge falls. Kicking a Sith downstairs. Emperor on throne chair. Lightsaber duel taking place while the space battle is outside. My young apprentice. The Alliance will die, as will your... Darth Vader loses limbs in both films in his final duel. Don't try it! is burned in both films. Darth Vader dies, Darth Vader is born. Super Star Destroyer crashes downward to, into Death Star 2. And the Invisible Hand crashes downward towards Coruscant. Climatic space battle, this time with command ships and frigates joining the fight. Using R2-D2 to get out of a sticky situation. Okay. R2! Crush them! Make them suffer! Cause your man! Return of the Jedi was originally going to be named Revenge of the Jedi, might I add. Wookiees at war on Kashyyyk 
and things that are similar to Wookiees, Ewoks, at war on Endor. The Emperor uses Force Lightning in both films. Part of a starship falls off during the space battle. Obi-Wan steals an antagonist ship on Utapau in Revenge of the Sith, and Han Solo and Chewbacca steal the Imperial shuttle in Return of the Jedi. Chase going on between Grievous and Obi-Wan, and speeder bike chase going on with Luke, Leia, and the Scout Troopers. Emperor playing the puppet master in both films. In Return of the Jedi, Luke walks away upset and Leia checks on Luke to ask what's wrong. Turns out Luke's family issues have been bugging him. In Revenge of the Sith, Anakin walks away upset and then Padme checks on Anakin to ask what's wrong. Turns out Anakin's nightmare about the future is troubling him. And there you have it. That's it for my review. Space out, everyone. And may the Force be with you.